Hello, everybody. My great pleasure today to introduce my good friend, George A. Johnson, Jr. Hey, George. Hey, how you doing, Alan? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you. Sure. Um, so, uh, Happy New Year, first of all, you know, to you oh, and happy your wife. Year, man. Yeah. Hope you have a very successful New Year also. Thank you. And healthy. Healthy, important, very important. Huh? Oh, very important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to speak about all the new music that you have been creating during COVID, uh, COVID uh, isolation time. So you've been at it at home, recording the crap out of it. So please give us a little bit of an idea how that all was for you. Well, I'm just, um, I feel blessed after all of these years. I think it's like maybe 65 years of music. I accumulated stuff at home. Uh, not only instruments, but, you know, like a, a, a music paper and different stuff from different artists um, that I worked with. But I didn't at the time, I didn't have really a lot of time to uh, practice or really, you know, get it or understand it. But because of the pandemic, I had plenty of time. So I started writing a lot of music, you know, and um, and it really turned out because uh, it seems like um Instead of bugging out, I really found a lot of creative juices, you know, and, and um, you know, with all the different pressures, I don't I don't let that bother me. That's part of why it's part of why I named the uh, CD what I did. Do you tell everybody what you call it? Um, Indomitable Spirit, the Water Tiger. Which is your year, right? That's your Chinese year. Yes, I love it. I love it. And um, that's w- what, you know, it came from the water tiger because of the Chinese uh, New Year coming up. And um, Indomitable Spirit has kind of home uh, um, with me. Um, a lot of times when artists are coming up, people tell them, you can't, uh, <laughs> you can't do this, you can't do that, you'll never. And, um, you know, why don't you smarten up? kind of thing so and through your career also you run into different things where uh club owners and different concert promoters and different people have different obstacles for you i'll look at it uh that way so it depends on your makeup now the reason some people become successful in their own way and then successful in a big way and you can understand this, and all the artists um, can understand this. Indomitable spirit is a spirit or a person who never gives up, can never be subdued, doesn't need a pep talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> need uh, uh, people to, oh, you better get up. Here's your coffee. You better hurry up to work. It's called a self-starter. A person who never takes no for an answer. And if this is the way that you feel and you, you, you are made up, you can't be in any other way. You actually may have indomitable spirit. And that's what you need to be an artist of any type. Absolutely, because uh, you know nobody throws you <clears throat> throws your livelihood uh, after you. It's uh, it's often for artists, as we all know, uh, difficult to you know feed us, pay the rent, do all of that stuff, and still, in some crazy way, we do it. And I love that, and I love that bit about us. The and beautiful part we about spoke about this the other day is uh, that we feel in some way very sorry to people who don't make actually music, who are not musicians, because they, they do not have this experience of elevation, of, of totalness, of love, of outpouring, um, to hit that right chord, or hit the right note, or give the right concert, and and uh, and the fulfillment that brings. So we're very lucky in that. <laughs> At true. the same time, to keep doing it uh, uh, is sometimes uh, difficult, you know. Well, I like to use that word that you uh, just mentioned, uh, fulfillment. 
it's a very, very important thing. Sometimes people say, oh, yeah, you know, I don't know about him, you know, and, you know, he, I don't even know why he does that. He swings that guitar around his neck. He puts that saxophone. He's always swinging them drums around. But you have to understand it's a total fulfillment involved. And that, like, there's a million different people. There's a million different suits to fit all kinds of people. And the people we are are the people that really enjoy making other people happy. They had a word for it back in the day. It was Troubadour. That's right. Farther back, farther back in our history and in, 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 in drum history, it's a Yoruba drummer, which all of the tribes, the king had a Yoruba drummer in the tribe. And don't laugh, because this is way before computer phones that were in your hand. This is way before that quarter and dime you used to this is how they used to communicate mm -hmm. so it's very very um it's very very important that the music touch people mm -hmm. it's very very important that's right mm -hmm. because actually maybe people don't know it yet but they do feel it within a pandemic music's a very very strong healing force a very strong healing force. It can make you very, very happy. It can make you tranquil. It can help you go to sleep. And it can also, um, I don't want to touch on it too much, it can also make you violent. So um, it's in what you play. And it's the notes that you touch. And it's the, it's the compassion that you play with. Um, because a lot of times um, I play with guys who play music and play chords and I'm talking big, strong guys, you know, with wives, they're, they're, you know, the real men. And they come backstage and they say, you know, you played music and tears came from my eyes and I did not know why. And I had to come back here and thank you. I feel uh, rejoiced. I feel like pressure has been taken off of me. Hey, man, I saw this dude compete in the UFC. I was totally shocked. You know, that thing, Glory, over there in Europe, they travel around with them them fighters, and they, you know, them, that boy was something else again. The, the lights got dim when he came in. I hope everybody was paid up. But uh, the compassion that music has is virtually untouched. And this is the reason why when some people write music, they go, you don't have to know music. They go, oh, I like that. I like the feeling of that. That's right. That's right. That's because the musician has been the same place you were, although they weren't with you and they never met you. Certain life experiences that you go through, a lot of people go through the same thing. Mm. You never have, you never know the other person, how heavy the person's load is. Yeah. But back yeah. to the music, I wrote, I, I finally uh, got the chords and the voicings to create some music that was compassionate. And I was really unthankful. Okay. You know, if I could, I'd like to talk about some of the songs, uh, some of the songs I wrote, like, um, like uh, the migration was like kind of like my experience with uh, Jimmy Garrison. You know, I lived in New York, and migration is a kind of a song that moves, and it's kind of like an intro, but it's a time, and it's a piece of music that gives you a feeling of warmth right away. That's the first song that I'm going to have on the uh, new CD. Guys are soloing on it. It's a warm feeling. And I was born and raised by the Atlantic Ocean. And we used to go down to the ocean, you know, thumb it down the ocean and have some sandwiches and go down, man, and like, you know, listen. And if you hear, you just listen. you got to use two of these. Okay, close that. Use two of these. <laughs> and listen to the waves crack on the jetties. Man, is that a drum solo? That's music. And I finally found out that the waves make love to the beach continuously. Mm -hmm. It's a whole other level. It's a whole other level. But that's the kind of music and that's the kind of feeling. When you get into the ocean, it's like a hat, getting a big hug and it's nice warm water. And it's like a whole rejoicing spiritual situation. And that's like the migration. But then from playing like with McCoy Tyner and Charles Irwin, having such high, high intensity, playing with high, high intensity 
uh, piano players and organ players. The guys are mentally advanced, and I was lucky enough to get some lessons, but I'll tell you, that song that I wrote, The Only Color is Love, is one of those high-intensity songs. Now, when I play with McCoy and I play with Charles Erwin, I played with Charles Erwin in, uh, in 74 at the Montreal Festival. I played with McCoy at the Montreal Festival, but the level was so high, and these songs are an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half. That's how I was raised. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, it goes without saying. I know. I saw you. I saw videos of you as a young man at the Montreux Jazz Festival, working your butt off uh, yeah. to keep up with what is going on. And uh, you know, you were kind of that was a that was a massive gig to play with Michael Tyner. And that was uh, my first. right, that's and right. Yeah. I saw you working it, man. Amazing. You know, you're a young guy. It was wonderful, man. Mm. Wonderful. Almost about 15, 20 pounds every show. But, I mean, it was wonderful, man. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I really loved it, man. It, and, see, that's the whole other thing about the, 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 the music. If you're in love with the music, certain things happen. Uh, maybe I'm a little superstitious or I'm a dreamer. Hey, man, I had no money with my career in the beginning, but I lived in New York. I lived with Jimmy Garris. I lived with Buster Williams. I used to thumb it and make it to New York on time for all the gigs I never really uh, late for a gig and I, you know I mean and Buster Williams lived on the 17th floor to negotiate the elevator to get all the rooms down there and get in the <laughs> oh man that's got funny. your head in the elevator <laughs> hey, man, you have not lived until you talk to a lady that's got a, a, a basket of clothes on her hip that's going down to wash clothes she don't care about you going to no gig down there man mm, so right. there's all kind of things that really create and, 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 and mold your career And, and look, just look, like, George, what I find interesting, um, obviously you're uh, uh, an amazing world-class jazz drummer, but um, we know each other now, maybe 14 years or so, and worked together for around that time. Uh, your singing has so much improved and has come really, really long way, and you you own your voice now, and, and that's what I found very interesting. I mean, the album has... Uh, about 16 tracks, I think, and eight, instrument, yeah. instru eight instrumentals and, and eight with vocals. Um, and so you have really developed that instrument immensely over the last years, that you were always a, a, a world-class jazz drummer. We know that. But uh, what I found very, very exciting about this album is uh, how you come along with the singing. And it's, it yeah, sounds fantastic. I really do, but I got a, I got a few secrets. Um, got a few secrets up my sleeve, man, and I'm glad we're doing an interview. Uh, being a live musician, I don't know if you knew I was. Uh, <laughs> I, I not only played drums with the platters, but I also sang with the ah, platters. I didn't know that. Yeah, when okay. that twilight is gone and the songbirds. I see. Well, you know, I had a ball, man. And then it was okay. the, drifters. the drifters. You know, you sang so, with them. Yes, yes. I didn't know and, that either. Man, my wife, man, she gonna have you cracking up. I had it playing drums all the years, right? And she hung with me through Grover, McCoy, everybody, Swinton, Lonnie Liston, everybody, Charles. Man, I was flicking my finger. You know how you do steps and you go. You know? Yeah. And then twirl around. You see that hand? <laughs> yeah. My wife died. I had this thing called a doo-wop engine from flicking your finger. I'm used to playing <laughs> the drums. I'm flicking my finger so hard, my knuckle on the second. I look at that knuckle. That thing looked like a that looked like, that looked like, looked like an orange or something like that. <laughs> That's so funny, man. I never got hurt playing the drums. I swear. And I Singing with the guys had a doo wop injury, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You never get it like that. That And is then, funny. I was I was really blessed, man, to um uh had that gig at um Autumn Lake. And I've been practicing every day. This is gonna sound funny. Hey helmet, I'm 69 years old, man. I still practice. You know why? Because you're never that good that you can't get better. True. An old dude uh, uh, told me, once you get satisfied, that's the other word for did. 
<laughs> you don't get satisfied. You always try to get better. Mm. So I took it, man, you know, but really I feel blessed, man, to to, to have really, um, I, I wrote the songs and, and I really practice every day uh, the, the singing and, and, and I got really blessed to have the gig at um, Autumn Lake. And people say to me, oh, man, this is George. I mean, these guys had cracked me up. Guys at the winery and other uh, musicians over here that uh, and they, they do things. They go, hey, man, six hours, man. I said, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? See, they don't understand. I'm messing around and fell in love. So what happened is in the beginning of my career, I don't know if people, you know, people play three hours, three hours. Okay, I ain't going to say nothing. When we were growing up, a job was five hours long, okay? Everybody was trying to sneak in the bar with the collar up, the big hat, trying to get the girls, the girls trying to get the guys. We played from 9 o'clock to 2 a.m. That was like general. Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't have uh, radios or, you know, all this technology that they have now, or DJs. Um, we had to actually, we had to actually, uh, back then, we had to do long gigs, I know, sets. That's right. That's mm. right. So, that, so being that, that's where you started from, fasting in five hours a night. Man, six hours ain't no problem for me. I'm like banging. I was banging out five hours worth of arrangements and stuff and singing background and singing this and that. See, I make money for music, man. Little bit of money. But one guy, one lady told me, she said, you take that little bit of money, you put a little bit of that little bit of money aside, and you keep going, and that little bit of money rolls up to a little bit bigger money, <laughs> and you put it somewhere, and you start saving again. And that's what I did. And it means something. It really means something, man. But uh, I'm singing over this place, man, and it really turned out. When you do stuff unconditionally, I never knew my voice was going to go where it went. All mm. I was trying to do was, you know, wow, man, I got to just do better. Yesterday, I did okay, but I didn't really, I could do that better. And I could do this better. And if I keep going, and what I found is the more you sing, it kind of stretches the voice. And the more that you sing, and I'm playing piano, you stay with the A440, so I'm in the center of the tone, center of each tone. So I feel real good about that. And like I did two hours yesterday because I had to run out at some food shopping and stuff, you know, and uh I do about maybe four or six hours a day with the, with the singing and I back it up with the piano and then I lay it out at night with the drums and it's like an infatuation, but I'm never bored. So <laughs> it's a good thing. You know, it's mm. really, really a good thing. And 12 songs, right? 12 originals. I feel good about it. And the vocal songs I kind of fell in love with because I kind of do like a, I call it dinner show. I kind of call it, you know, a dinner show because like the songs I was mentioning, like New Mud Bone is kind of like an orchestration. And um, if I do have a chance, um, there was a conductor when I played with one of the bands, uh, the Zurich Symphony Orchestra and the Geneva Symphony Orchestra, and he wanted to do some of my works, but the conductor, that time has lapsed and I haven't got back, but the uh, new Mudbone is about uh, orchestration, uh, uh, orchestra jazz, and then it shuts down into a real um, New York swinging organ, power organ, like the trumpet solo, and, um, you know, really intense. I, 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 I'm really shooting for more intensity. And then with the dinner hour more of a cocktail uh, a beautiful uh ballad um storytelling um a portion so when i do the concerts that's exactly how i have it set up and i set up all my cds to be as a moving concert so guys are gonna get rid you know they have, they'll be able to play for you and you'll really enjoy it i mean i have uh organ 
uh, vibes, which is a different instrument people don't hear a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I have on occasion violin. I have tenor saxophones. I have flute. Flute is flute is really majestic, and it has a lot of different pitches and feeling for me. For the simple fact, um, I don't know if it's because of indigenous instruments because I do happen to have not only African-American, but American Indian. And the flute is majestic. The flute is uh, meditational. Uh, it has a certain feeling in syncopation with other chords. I, I would like to say the flute's therapeutic. And I'm not saying that because... He said to a flute player. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, but... The flute is a different instrument because, and I don't mean to be ghoulish, the flute, like the drums, the drums, believe it or not, was made out of skin, okay, from flesh, earth, flute. It's made out of, out of bamboo, it's made out of wood. Um, That's right. Bone, yeah. bone in the beginning, bone. Of bone an too, yes. You know? And, and indigenously, wooden flute is the bomb. Mm. They didn't really need the echo. All they need to do is play through the woods. I had a friend who played over to the spring. See, the thing about nature and music is that they're so connected, you can't leave it out. Even if there's no nature in the city, its intensity is still nature. Okay, Attributes are still nature because human beings are involved. Yeah. When you so play flute, and you play flute across the spring with these great big trees, you hear an echo that is phenomenal. You know? So, I, that, I have my music geared around. I, I'd like to think that it really makes people feel good. And I, and I, and I wanna, want to think that therapeutically you feel rejoiced. Only because I play with bands with that feeling and I'm hoping that I transcend the same the same thing. Like. Still work, yeah. Yeah. But Judge, we released the first single "Goodbye and Farewell" uh, in December, right? Seventeenth of December. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to now do another signal first, correct? That's what we discussed last time. Yeah. And then, and then we're going to release the full uh, album around March, April. I think that's the plan right now, yeah? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. So, um, would you like to, uh, to say anything to your friends and fans and music lovers at yes. the end of our little interview um, uh, about the album or about anything? Yes. Well, first thing I'd like to um, um, talk about that uh, goodbye and farewell. First uh, and foremost, I'd like to tell people that have seen me, have listened to the music, and the people who haven't, people who I've just brushed into, I, I, I seriously um, love you and appreciate um, our moments together. That's why I wrote Goodbye and Farewell. It's out of appreciation for all the people I've ever come in contact with and um, uh, uh, good, bad, and indifferent, because uh, if you're so lucky to make it, Uh, in some years in your life, you'll learn how to appreciate um, everything. And it also makes you understand what you should not do. And it also makes you understand uh, what you should do more of. Goodbye and Farewell is a song I'd like to send out and thank everyone about. I'd also like to thank everybody that comes out to the Autumn Lake. I hate to be giving them a shout out, but they Okay, man, they working. Go ahead. That's fine. That's fine. Autumn, Autumn Lake Winery. Mm. Because one of the things happened there, I'm seeing the owner of the winery way down there. He looks that about that big. This place is big. They have triathlons. They got a huge spring, man. You know, they do the swimming over top of everybody. You know, big triathlon. He's about that big way down there. So when he <laughs> finally gets back up there, before I play the next song, I say, hey, Mark, yo, What are you doing way down there, man? Sean, we, you know, with Jay, he said, George, I got, he said, George, I'm going to tell you, as long as I've been here, I never had to do traffic control. These people come out here, man, they, they sit out here forever, and I don't have any place to park them. So I had to go way down there, park them way down there. 
He said, that's the first time I ever had to do that. I said, man. Well, then do it. For you. I said, I guess the wine is good. He said, George, I'm here seven days a week, and the wine is good, but they ain't out here every day. <laughs> it made me feel good. You know, that really made me feel good. I play yeah. all music. All kinds of music, whatever makes you feel good. If I, if you come out and you want to hear one style, I do that style. I come back the next day, do that style, and um, and that's why I really feel good about the uh, music I put out because I can play and make a living, and then have some cutting edge music that you can go to iTunes, call Mister Wolf, he'll hook you up. <laughs> and it's a wonderful thing. I want to thank everybody from the uh, Cork Winery. Old York Sellers Winery, everybody who has hired me through the years, I am still available at a very, very, very modest price. And I really, uh, I really hope, George, that uh, we still getting this together to get you come over to a, a, to Europe because there's a lot of really great jazz clubs in in Europe. Uh, Of course, the big cities, Amsterdam, Berlin, Hamburg, but uh, uh, Paris, but also many other smaller cities. And they, I know, I know, because growing up in, in West Germany, I used to hang in them. Yeah, a lot, a lot of jazz clubs. Oh, And yeah. So we have, I mean, you've been touring them yourself many times. So we have to see what's happening with the virus situation and stuff and when we can get that on the road but I really would love to get you to come over here and bring you guys and and uh, that would be I'm wonderful I can't wait I've toured with other guys I've toured with my own band um, I have an endorsements with the Sonar Drum Company in case people don't know they happen to be the best drums in the world uh, made in Germany and uh I'm telling you now, I had a drum tech. I was really blessed, man. And I played on every continent, had drums. Hey, look, man, if it happens, we will wear them out. That's right. This is what <laughs> Hey, man, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. This is how we roll. Hey, look, it's either 100% or no percent. I'm yeah. sorry, man. And that's how you do it. That's, that's how you do it. You don't go, oh, next time, see, because no. check out. You don't know where that sand is in the hourglass. It could not be a next time. That's right. So all I want to say to everyone, I want to say thank you very much. And thank you for being so compassionate. I appreciate each and every one of you. And thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Oh, well, one more thing. Thank you. Ah, here's the tiger. Look at it. George A. Johnson Jr., the water tiger. Love it, love it. Awesome. We're going to have to find uh, where, we, where people can get that T-shirt. Uh, you know, take pictures and put it in the Wolf Entertainment Facebook group and, uh, and do a bit of marketing for it. My man. I, my I want one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Trust me when I tell you, everybody wants a tiger in their tank. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> You need energy, uh, energy, energy, man. That's and right, Judge. This year. It's, you know, I wish everybody well. Please be careful. Please be safe. Um, and I hate to be corny. Uh, you know, Hulk Hogan used to say, you know, take your vitamins and say your prayers. It ain't too funny now, though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Hey, look. All right, Judge. Well, again, thank you very much. And uh, yeah. good luck with the album. And... Um, Thank you. Thanks for having me, Helmut. Thank in you. regards to your in regards to your wife, and uh, much love to you. I just want to say, man, my wife is tougher than a Waffle House steak. <laughs> and look, and she'll tell you, man. She'll tell you sarcastically. What she say? She says sarcastically. If there's ever any doubt that I haven't put my heart and soul into the music, just take. Just take it from my wife, who sarcastically says, every fraction, every second is precise. I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Judge. Hey, I love you, you take, man. Love you too, man. You take care. All right. Thank you. We speak soon. Goodbye. You know I cherished our time together